I'm Jill Bishop. I'm founder and CEO of Multilingual Connections. We're an Evanston-based global language solutions provider. Uh, we are just outside of Chicago, and we provide translation, transcreation, transcription, and multimedia localization in over 75 languages. Well, we work across industries. So we have government clients like the state of Illinois and the Chicago Housing Authority. We have uh, large brands like Airbnb and Allstate. We've worked with Netflix in the past. We work with small um, non-for-profits, uh, marketing agencies, research companies, universities, elementary and high schools, really all across the board, law enforcement, uh, law firms, uh, Major League Baseball Players Association. So really just uh, runs the gamut. Our work spans a variety of different services. So um, translation is uh, translating text to text. And so that could be um, brochureware, it could be websites and apps, um, surveys, um, uh, legal contracts, uh, all different types of written contract, uh, con sorry, all, all types of written content. Um, on the transcription side, that's audio and video transcription. It could be for focus groups, um, police interrogations and body wires, one-on-one -on -one interviews, uh, video footage, documentaries, uh, a lot of research-related content. Uh, so that's transcription. Yeah. Uh, we do transcreation of marketing content, so not just translation, but creation of new content in a new language and culture that is relevant to that audience. Um, and then subtitling and voiceover uh, for e-learning, for videos, for film, for advertising. We work in over 75 languages. By far and away, Spanish is the most popular, uh, the most frequently requested uh, language that we work in. Uh, and then we have our next 20. So we do all of the, the Western European languages. We do Chinese, Korean, Vietnamese, Japanese. We do Arabic and Hebrew, Russian, Hindi, German. Uh, so we've got our, our languages that we're working in. We have multiple requests every day. And then we have the languages that are more of an infrequent request. So it could be once a week or once a month. Uh, we have linguists all around the world that specialize based on native language, region, industry expertise, and software requirements. We've got hundreds and hundreds of linguists um, because we, we have to match our linguists to our projects very specifically based on those requirements. Um, and then we have resources, we have relationships with agencies in other countries, uh, in other regions of the world for um, much less common requested languages, some of the African dialects or African languages that, that come up that we don't have um, in-house resources for or, or frequent resources for, we'd rather um, work with trusted partners uh, for some of those languages. So I lost my job 15 years ago and I had been thinking about starting a business for a long time and had just been waiting for the right opportunity and sometimes uh, the right opportunity finds you in in ways that you wouldn't exactly plan but in retrospect it was the right time and the right uh, the right kick in the butt to get it done. Uh, so my husband and I were out to dinner at a Cuban restaurant in Chicago and I started charting out my possible directions on my place map and one of those directions was start my own business and so I figured Now's a good time as any. And so at the time uh, when, I, when I launched the company back in 2005, we were providing uh, customized workplace language training. So uh, job specific English and Spanish training for um, hotels and restaurants and manufacturing facilities. And just probably a month later, um, somebody I went to college with called and asked if I could translate a website into Spanish. And I said, sure. And then I hung up the phone uh, and figured it out, and that was the beginning of the translation agency. Um, and so that was home base for many years, and then across these 15 years, there have been a lot of pivots along the way as uh, new opportunities presented themselves, and other scenarios turned out to be less profitable or just less scalable. And so today we don't do any language training anymore, uh, and haven't for about four or five years, uh, and we focus on those translation services. In the beginning, I wanted to be everything to everyone. And part of that has been beneficial because we started offering services that we otherwise wouldn't have thought to do. So when a client came and said, 
can you do translation? I said, sure. When somebody said, can you do transcription of audio for a life history project for the University of Utah? I said, sure. And all of those became really great opportunities. Um, at the same time, um, I decided to offer, when we were still doing corporate language training, I decided it was time to move out of our basement and into an office space and uh, build in classrooms so that we could do our training. And I figured at the same time, why don't we offer community classes, uh, not just for workplace, but for anybody who wants to learn a language. So we opened a language school for adults and for children, a dozen languages, after school programs, summer camps, weekend bilingual boot camps. And it just got to the point where it was too much of too much. And each one of those areas was a separate business. And I was trying to raise a child and have some semblance of, of work-life balance and a few minutes to myself. And I realized that I couldn't do everything and do it well. Uh, so that's when I decided to do less, do it better. And I closed the language training and it was the best, it was the best decision for the business, even though it was a really hard decision for me personally. Uh, it was very, the language school was very much a part of, of me. I'm a linguistic anthropologist and a former language teacher and um, teaching children language, offering the service of, of heritage languages and other languages for people that were interested was very much about who I was and what I wanted to do, um, but I couldn't do it and uh, and still pay the bills and still grow the business. And so uh, it was a painful decision, but it was the right decision. And every once in a while, I look back with nostalgia, but I know it was the right thing to do. Certainly machine translation is a trend that's been around for a long time and growing in sophistication. Uh, and that's something that we have to we have to think about and understand where that belongs, uh, both for us as a company and for users in general. There are cases where machine translation makes a lot of sense. And then there are those where it doesn't and where human knowledge and nuance and culture really are, are essential. And the machines aren't sophisticated enough to understand that. Um, so at the same time that machine translation is increasingly used, there's also thankfully an increasing awareness of the importance of of, of, of that nuance and where humans fit in. Um, I would say also crowdsourcing. There's a lot, uh, there are a lot of platforms for translation and transcription that break up a file into lots of little files, send it out, people grab it. They do their, they could do it on their phone while they're waiting for the bus. They could, you know, do it in all different types of ways. And then that content is, is stitched back together and delivered to the client. Um, there's also very, very clear cases for where that's gonna make sense. And then other cases, where, where we come in, where consistency and quality and human touch um, really make, make the difference. Um, we, we want our clients not to look at us as a vendor, but more as a partner. It's not about just a transaction, but it's a relationship. And so if you've got complex marketing needs, your entire business strategy rests on, on, on a rollout internationally where, where nuance is everything and really understanding your user and connecting with them is everything, you can't just send it off, think about it after the fact, you know, go back and do it, you know, send it off to somebody that you don't trust. You need that accountability. You need somebody who can walk through it with you and help make sure that you're going to be as successful as possible um, because, because somebody that you trust has the language and culture piece covered. It's certainly an interesting time, a uh, challenging time for a lot of us. Um, we have, we're based in the Chicago area and we have 13 employees that are theoretically based in our office here uh, and the rest are um, international or um, in other US states. And so we very quickly made the change to full-time remote and that has, um, it, it's given us really good insight into how the other half, our other half lives every day. Uh, and so we've always, made it a priority to work on um, creating connections and keeping connections and engagement with our remote team. Now that all of us are remote, we it, it opens our, our eyes to new opportunities and new challenges to make sure without that mothership that we used to have, um, making sure that everybody feels connected to each other and to the company and has fun. And so, uh, so that's definitely on our mind. Uh, another thing is making sure that we are the flexible partner that our clients uh, need us to be for them as their businesses change in ways that they can't even and anticipate um, from one day to the next. Uh, so we're doing uh, a lot, we're seeing a lot more requests for e-learning localization, um, all kinds of online platforms, transcribing Zoom meetings and video. Uh, so we want to be there for our clients now and in the future.